here at 1046 on gold. Okay, that was a breaker pattern long off the reversal, uh, bouncing off the low of day. Well, guys, didn't last very long. Short-term trend came up, bounces off overhead resistance over here, right? Overhead resistance up top here at 54s. We mark up our swing low, and we take a reversal back to the downside here because we couldn't get the buyers to push it through. Okay, couldn't get that trade to trigger, so we're looking for a two-step. A reversal off the overhead resistance level. Now, guys, remember, a two-step pattern does not need to come at the high of day or the low of day. We love to see it there because that's going to be the highest percentage opportunity, but we don't absolutely have to see it at the high of day or low of day. Any overhead resistance will make a great level for a two-step pattern short. So at 1048, just two minutes after we took that big 23 tick winner, two-step pattern short going back to the downside now, two off at five, it's 10, one off at nine, that's 19, plus one is 20 ticks or 200 USD. So we take 20 here at 1048, 23 with the breaker long. Okay, there's 43 ticks, guys. Add that to our 23 ticks, right? There's 66 ticks, guys, between 950 and 1050. And all because we knew exactly where we needed to be trading. And then we simply waited for gold to come down and get into that area for us. And then we knew because of the homework we had done, right? We set up our charts the right way every day at 8 o'clock. So we knew everything was set up properly. We had confidence in that. And we took our trades accordingly. Let's keep moving. Next up here is over on crude. Now we had one trade today on crude. Let's take a look at it here. Short term trend was down. We bounced. We bounced off support here. Right there, support there, 77.90. Now we kept chopping around this 78 even. You can see this choppy area here, right? 78 even. We spent almost all day today on crude at 78 even, right? Buyers trying to keep it above, sellers trying to push it down. Really couldn't get anything started here for a very long time on crude, just whipping around back and forth above and below that big round number. In this case, though, we got above the 78.05. As you guys know, we always look for five ticks above that big round number. We got that here above all fives. We break above the swing high. Now, we had to worry about a trend line overhead here, but we had plenty of room. You can see, though, it didn't go very far. Came up, got us our plus four, then changed direction, headed back to the downside. That's exactly why we trail our stop up to entry plus one. We got our plus four. Entry moved to plus one. We got taken out of plus one, two off at four, two off at one. Eight plus two is 10 or 100 USD. Okay, so our, what's that fourth trade of the morning here, guys? A little scratch trade here. Crew was a completely different story today. Crew had a hard time getting going today. But we managed to grab one high percentage trade off it, though, to make our 100 bucks. And then, of course, we had to make our, our guests happy this morning. Had to trade the S&P. Now, I, I've said before, I really am not a big fan of the S&P. I think I'll probably go back to the Russell tomorrow. But I, I know a lot of you guys... You like to watch the S&P. You're, you're, you're very knowledgeable about it. A lot of you guys have traded it before. So I like to, I like to use the S&P in our trade room as much as I can. It's a classic example, though, of a market that is too high volume. There's simply too many people in the S&P right now that are pushing things around. Now, here at 1130, of course, we'll talk more about that. If you guys have any questions about that, email me or come into the, come into the room tomorrow, and I'll talk about what I mean by too much liquidity. How can a market have too much liquidity? Well, just like a market can have not enough liquidity, it can also have too much liquidity. We'll talk more about that tomorrow live trade room. But here in the S&P 1133, we were towards the end of the morning here, right? Trying, starting to get towards the end of the morning, but 1130, we always see better volume 1130. So, of course, the short-term trend was up, right? Slope of that trigger line is, is pointing up here. Now, we had a couple concerns here. The first concern was, right, the first concern was it was in the middle, right not at the extremes you can see here my swing high guys is right in the middle right lows highs I'm right in the middle that was my first concern okay now my second concern was right look where we are here open close right we're right around the open and close All right and the third concern was at that time it was pretty slow out there right getting a little bit slower here as the morning started to progress so at 11:30 this morning we had a couple concerns, but again, I, I, you know, call, call me human here, but I felt a, I always, I always feel like I want to get a couple S and P trades taken for you guys here because I know a lot of you guys like them. Okay, this trade, of course, good example. We saw lots of big buyers here. All right. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Number four, momentum, right, was overbought. That was the big concern. I forgot about that one. Right, momentum was overbought. That was the reason why when I called this trade, I said, careful, this is going to be higher risk. You can see down bottom here, momentum was overbought. 
right? Getting ready to point and curl back down. It was pointing up at the time we took the trade, but after we get into it, ended up shifting and pointing back down. So breaker long here, 1130. It was a little bit higher risk. I know, I know. She probably shouldn't have taken this, but again, I like, to, I like to take these patterns so you guys can experience this in real time. A lot of great learning here. We watched the tape. We really got to know the personality of the S&P a little better here. We took an early exit loss. As soon as the momentum indicator curled, we saw the sellers jump in. The speed of the tape was dropping. It was pretty much a gimme here. We were not going to get this easy pattern to the upside here. And you can see it pretty much just chopped around here for quite a while until it ended up giving way to the downside. So we made the right decision by getting out of the trade early. Probably should have sat on my hands, though, because overbought momentum for a long trade never going to be good slow speed around the opens and the middle guys there were lots of reasons there guys why we should have skipped that trade yeah i should have could have would have everybody takes stops every once in a while i take them too we took a three tick loss on that times four contracts that's 12 ticks or 150 usd on that uh second to last trade of the day here then we went back to gold all right now guys this is this is what i'm talking about all right we knew exactly let's go back to that gold chart real quick all right go back to that gold chart because i want to show you guys i want to remind you here all right, where are we right now? We had to get below. Remember, we had to get below these two areas here, 53.3 and 50.3. Okay, once we got below that, we then had to worry about coming down to 42.1. Okay, so our sweet spot, right? Our sweet spot was right here, right? There was my sweet spot. I needed to get something right there, right? Between the 50 down to the 42s. Okay, 50 down to 42s. That's where I needed to get my trade here because I had double bottoms at 42s. I had double tops at 50.3. And I need to make sure that I don't put myself in a position where that's going to take me to the market. All right, so let's follow these last couple trades here, these last two trades here on gold. Remember, we had to get below the 50.2, and here we are, for, right here, 44.9. So we got below the levels we had to. We come down, short-term trend down. Now, at this point, guys, if you recall, we were really moving quickly at this point. We broke through the low of day, right? Test the low of day here. We mark up our swing low. Now remember, guys, look for that two-step, right? That would be a two-step long right there, right? There's a two-step long if we broke above that swing high. No swing high, though, so we look for the breaker short. There's the breaker short. 49, we took it at 44.9. Two off at four, one off at nine, one off at seven, 24 ticks, or 240 USD. So nice, easy breaker pattern short. It was where exactly we wanted it to be. It wasn't too low. It wasn't too high. Okay, we then came down. We kept chipping away at the slow of day. Now, we looked for a two-step pattern long, guys, but what didn't we see here? Momentum. Momentum was oversold, right? Momentum oversold. I want to see momentum pointing up for that two-step pattern long. We didn't get it, but what did we get, though? We got that one tick new higher high. See that? Now, whenever we see that one tick new higher high, what are we always thinking? Get ready for a good reversal. And here we go. So when we saw that one tick new higher high, guys, we knew right away, get on your right, get ready for that breaker pattern short somewhere. We came down, mark up our swing low, break below that swing low for your breaker pattern short. 41.1 was the fill. We took two off at plus five, one off at eight, one off at 11, right? Trailed our stop all the way down to the lows there to take in 29 ticks or 290 USD. So guys, after that S&P loss, we went right back to our rules, went right back to our trading, right? Forget about the loss, learn from it, move on, and wait for the next pattern, guys. We got it here on gold for two more back-to-back -back winners. Total it all up, guys. We knew exactly where to get in, where to get out, and it all started with our homework this morning, guys. If you weren't here for 8 o'clock this morning, come here for tomorrow morning, guys, 8 o'clock, and we'll get everything set up for you live in real time. All right, so 117 ticks. 11.40 today. What a great day. Now, tomorrow, Tuesday, June 29th, again, get a, get a, get a, get a, a, a short week this week. 7.45, same store sales. 9 o'clock, Case Shiller Home Prices. 10 o'clock, Consumer Confidence. We get 11.30, a webinar tomorrow, so you don't want to miss that. And don't forget, we're closed on Friday and the following Monday, guys. This Friday and the following Monday for the 4th of July holiday. We'll talk more about that in training on Wednesday. And we'll open up tomorrow morning at 7.45 a.m. Eastern Time. Congratulations to all of our members, guys. We've got a bunch of brand new members out there. So bring your questions with you guys to the room. Don't be afraid to ask questions or ask for help. The beginner's course is perfect for all you new trial guests out there. It builds a firm foundation of knowledge that will then build on top of with the intermediate and the advanced course. My name is Joseph James. If you guys want any more help, give us a, give us a call, send us a Skype, jump on email, and we'll see you guys back here tomorrow, 7.45 a.m. Bye-bye for now.